Welcome everyone to the first episode of MicroPython series where well, I'll make sure that you all get comfortable on using ESP32 board in MicroPython for any of your projects. So in this first episode, I'll be guiding you with downloading the firmware file of MicroPython, downloading Tony which is an ID for MicroPython, installing or rather flashing firmware onto ESP32 board using Tony. And in the end, we'll be making two very basic projects just to get started with MicroPython. Out of them, one is like blinking LED on the ESP32 board. And second is reading the button status of ESP32 and turning on and off the LED according to the button pressed. So this is a very basic video. So if you're not at all aware about MicroPython, don't worry. After watching this video, you will be comfortable in programming your first project in MicroPython. And let's get started. This video is sponsored by LTM, which is a PCB designer based software company. Now let me tell you one very interesting, very unique feature about this software which I bet you haven't seen in any other PCB designing software and that feature is called as follow me mode. Now this is truly very useful feature which I can't explain it in simple words, rather let me show you the actual video of this particular feature. Have you seen that? The path automatically adapts the curve quite seamlessly. And how I can imagine making this kind of path in any other PCB designing software would be really a tedious task for sure. Now you can also try this and many other features of this PCB designing software by just clicking on the link mentioned in the description. Yes, by clicking on that link, you'll be getting a free trial version of LTM designer software. So go ahead, try it out and if you find it interesting, you can purchase this software later on. So now the first step is we need to download the firmware file of MicroPython, particularly for the ESP32 board. And for that, you need to go to micropython.org website and here just go inside the download section. Now here you need to select the board on which you want to flash the firmware file. So in my case, it is ESP32 board. And if I talk about which ESP32 board I'm using, then I'm using this do it, take it V1 module. And if you want to get the exact same module, well, you can get it from our website where we are selling it at the cheapest price on internet. Just click the link mentioned in the description and you'll get on this page and you can buy the ESP32 module. It will be delivered at your doorstep. So now select the ESP32 board here. And here, just download the latest firmware file. So I'll uh, click on this link, uh, which will automatically start downloading the firmware file. So yeah, that was all about downloading the firmware file. Now the second step is to download the Thorny, which is a Python IDE for beginners as the tagline says. Now you can consider it as a kind of Arduino IDE. So Arduino has a plus point, uh, which is uh, it has its own language. It has its own IDE. It has its own hardware. So everything is developed by Arduino. But in Python, it's not like that. Python is an open source language. So the firmware file is different. The ID will be different. There are so many different kinds of IDs available on internet, but this is the easiest and uh, quite interactive, uh, we can say, uh, ID and somewhat feels like Arduino. So if you are uh, coming from the Arduino uh, programming language, then this will be best suited for you. And this is also for best suited for beginners as well. So now you just need to download it according to your operating system. I already downloaded uh, uh, the Mac version of this software. So I'll just start that Tony uh, IDE. Okay, so here is the Thorny IDE. Now, before we get started with programming this board, we first need to flash the firmware onto the ESP32 board and the firmware file is still downloading, uh, no problem. Uh, but now to flash the firmware, we will require one tool called as ESP tool, okay? And uh, you don't need to uh, download it externally. You can also download the plugin of that inside this Thorny. Uh, let me guide you. For that, you just need to go to tools, go into manage plugins, and here just search for ESP tool. Here's that ESP tool plugin. Just click on that. And here you will get one install button. In my case, that is, as it is already installed, I'm not getting that install button, but you just need to click on the install button. That's it. Click on the close button. And with this, you have successfully installed the ESP tool. And now we can, you know, erase the firmware of the ESP32 board and, uh, you know, flash our own MicroPython firmware. And let me guide you with that as well, like how to do that. For that, you just need to go to run into select interpreter. Now here in the interpreter, you have to select the MicroPython for ESP32. Just select that. After that, select the right COM port on which this ESP32 board is connected with. Okay. After that, click on install or update firmware. Here again, select the port. So this is the port. Now for the firmware file, we'll be you know selecting the file that we have just downloaded. In my case, uh, this one. Okay, the version 1.17. I'll click on the open button. 
Uh, make sure uh, you have check mark this box called as erase flash before installing and this will erase all the previously flashed data and then it will start installing the firmware okay after that just click on the install button and it will start all these steps required okay uh, make sure you press and hold the boot button until it says writing Okay, as you can see, the writing uh, appears here and now I can release the boot button. So now it will erase the flash and, uh, you know, flash the MicroPython firmware on it. Two very boring minutes later. Okay, so the MicroPython firmware is successfully flashed. Now you just need to click on the close button. Click on OK. Now to cross check whether the MicroPython firmware is successfully flashed onto our ESP32 board or not, well, you just need to press the reset button on the board and here as you can see it says MicroPython version 1.17 uh, ESP32 model with ESP32, that means the MicroPython like this ESP32 board is running on MicroPython as of now. And here as you can see this three arrow appears here which is also termed as Ripple REPL whose full form is Read, Evaluate, Print and Loop. So this is kind of a feature provided by Python in which like we can interact with the Python uh, you know powered devices like this ESP32 without uploading any single line of code in it for example as of now we haven't uploaded any code on it but still I can interact uh, with this device via Python let me show you the example so here uh, first of all I'll type the command as print which is used to print data into the uh, bracket I'll type the first thing which all the programmers type while learning new languages is the hello world and when I press enter as you can see this hello world printed here and it all this is running inside the ESP32 board okay so without uploading any single line of code we can interact with this device and we can also interact with the uh, GPIO pins of it and for that uh, we first need to import one model called as machine before that let me show you uh, what is machine okay so when I type help here all the important uh, we can say commands appear here uh, regarding ESP32 for uh, like MicroPython on ESP32 for example here as you can see it says import machine now this is uh, similar to to including a library inside an Arduino IDE. So here we are including the library called as machine which is responsible for all the GPIO pins attached to this ESP32 board. Okay. So after importing that machine module, we can now interact with the pin number for example. So here as you can see the pin 12 is defined as output by this machine command and after that we are sending the data one. Let's just try out this thing. So first of all here I will import the machine okay i'll press enter so your machine uh, module is successfully important you can say the library is included okay after that i will define one variable which is led and it will be nothing but uh, machine dot pin into the bracket pin number two because uh, i want to turn on the built-in led of the csp32 board which is attached onto the cpi2 after that i'll type comma and here i will type again machine dot pin dot out output so this is the simple command to define pin number two as output and it will be stored inside the led variable okay i'll press enter here we successfully did it now we can turn on the led on the esp32 board by just typing the command led dot value in the bracket one and let's just press enter finger crossed okay so inbuilt led of the esp32 turned on let me just turn on my smartphone's camera to let you show the results as well okay so yeah here is the ide i will again type the command as a zero to turn off the led and uh, i'll press enter okay the led turned off if i turn on again and turn off so as you can see like without uploading any single line of code we are still able to access the micro python device which is the esp32 that's the power of python that's the power of rebel you can see so that were the steps to flash the firmware on the esp32 board now let me guide you on how to upload actual python code onto this board and for that uh, this id will be super useful so here inside this particular window you can write your python code okay so let's start writing our first ever python code to blink the led on the board at an interval of one second okay, let's start so first and foremost thing is we need to include the modules or you can say include the library and for that we'll be including the module called as machine module so machine module is responsible for all the pin numbers and we'll include another module which will be time which will is responsible for you know delays kind of thing okay we want to de provide a delay of one second for that we need to use the time module as well so these two libraries or these two modules will require and after that let's just define the led as a, a variable which will be responsible for turning on and off the led like the built-in led of this esp32 board so i'll type the same command led is equal to machine dot pin into the bracket pin number two again comma machine dot pin dot out okay 
So with the single command, we have made the pin number two as output and it is stored inside the variable LED. Okay, now I will type while true. Now this is same as using a void loop. Okay, so here we don't have a void loop kind of thing. So we have defined here while true. That means it's an infinite loop. So code will be he staying here forever. Okay, after that, we have to provide the colon. That means now we will be writing the code inside the while loop. And when we press enter, as you can see, it has some space uh, here. Okay, this is called as indentation in Python. Okay, so Python don't have those curly braces as we have in C language. Rather, it has the indentation. So if we uh, put the indentation, the ID, uh, you know, uh, what you can say, interpret that the code is written inside the particular function for this example inside the while loop so let's start writing the code so first of all we need to turn on the led so it will uh, the simple command is led dot value into the bracket one after they will provide the delay and for the delay we will type the command as time dot sleep into the bracket one now here we need to provide the delay in number of seconds so earlier in the arduino we will be providing the delay in microseconds but here we have to provide delay in seconds so one means one second if i write 0 0.5 here that means 500 millisecond okay so let's keep it one as of now after that again we will turn off the led by typing the command led dot value zero and time dot sleep into the bracket one so yeah, that's the simple code of blinking LED onto the ESP32 board at the interval of one second. Let us try and test this particular example. So I'll click on the play button here and I'll select a MicroPython device. Now here there is one very important thing to keep in mind. We have to save the code which we want to run onto the ESP32 board or in a MicroPython device where to save it is the name main.py okay because the firmware is written in such a way that as soon as it boots up it will first run the boot.py file and after that it will run the main.py file so you have to write this particular name only. Click on OK and okay the firmware is successfully flashed if i turn on my camera on the smartphone you'll be able to see that the led is now blinking at the interval of one second so yeah, with this simple line of code we are able to uh, no, blink the led at the interval of one second that's 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 how easy to use micro python uh, thanks to uh, thorny id as well okay so yeah that's the first project the first code that we have written ever for micro python let us move one step ahead so this was all about uh, making a gpio pin as an output but now let's try to make a gpio pin as an input and read the data of it and act accordingly okay for that i'll again include one more variable called as but which is which stands for button is equal to machine dot pin into the bracket now the button is attached to gpio zero so i'll type zero here comma machine dot pin dot in that means it is an input device okay so now what i'll do i'll delete all these things here inside the while loop and here in the while loop, i'll create another variable called as button status which will be equal to but dot value okay so whatever the value of the button is it will be stored inside the but status so here i will type the if condition now so if but underscore status is equal to is equal to true or it's a reverse logic so let us type false okay so if it is false i'll press colon here and again press enter as you can see there's one more indentation appear here which reveals that now the code will be writing which will, it will be going inside the if condition okay so if the button status is false that means the button is pressed we are turning on the led i'll type led dot value core bracket one else i'll turn off the led led dot value into bracket zero okay no semicolon <laughs> so led dot value okay great so yeah that's the simple line of code to turn on and off the led according to the button press let's just try and test it out the code i'll click on the play button uh, okay first of all we need to stop this okay so now we can uh, press the play button and i think it's done okay so let's just turn on the smartphone's camera so yeah here's the esp32 board and if i press the boot button as you can see the led turned on if i release that led turns off on on off on off on off on off on off yeah so yeah our second project of you know interacting with the button and uh, turning on and off the led according to the button press is also successfully working by just like writing very simple line of code so yeah it's that easy to start uh, like getting started with MicroPython. It's that easy to you know write code in MicroPython as well. Well, there are some of the tricks here uh, to you know reduce the number of commands. For example, if I type here as from 
मशीन इम्पोर्ट पिन वॉट इट विल डू इट विल जस्ट इम्पोर्ट द पिन रिलेटेड फंक्शन फ्रॉम द मशीन मॉड्यूल ओके सो नाव वी नो लॉन्ग नीड टू टाइप दिस मशीन हियर एंड वी कैन जस्ट टाइप डिरेक्टली पिन हियर ओके वी डोंट नीड टू टाइप द मशीन डॉट पिन and this will again make our code way more simple but typing this command now we don't need to write machine dot pin and if i like upload this code like this stop it again and uh, re upload this okay same this the code will work in the similar manner only okay let's just start the screen this camera as you can see it's turning on and off the led it's working similarly like it was working before okay so but yeah what we did we just type this command and the rest of the command becomes way more shorter okay so there are more such tips and tricks of python which i will be you know guiding you all like within every episode so yeah that was the all about the first episode i hope you got to know about how to use micro python on esp32 board it's really very simple very straight forward okay now the reason of me shifting towards micro python uh, is basically i want to you know make next level projects in uh, ai ml and um, uh, computer vision stuff like that so when i search for these kind of projects i found off that for computer vision we need to use open cv that requires python for machine learning we need to have uh, tensorflow light which requires python so these are the things that requires python to interact to make projects in that particular domain so i I thought why not to shift on to micro python and start making some new next level projects and as i thought of shifting on to micro python i thought why not to share this knowledge with you all guys let's just start learning together sharing together and let's just reach to that peak point together okay so that's the main reason for me shifting on to the micro python and yeah that was the first episode so in the upcoming episodes i will be you know making way more cool stuff maybe the iot project maybe the the web socket based projects maybe the bluetooth based projects as well do let me know in the comment section like what uh, you want to learn about this esp32 board like what you want to make using micro python particularly on our esp32 board do drop your suggestion into the comment of the video also share this video with your friends and let them know that such in sony like techie sms has started this whole new series of using micro python on esp32 board this will be super fun super useful super easy to understand super interesting ad as well and that being said I'm just ending this video here and now. Just wait for my next video to explore, learn, share with me. Take care, SMS.